Hello everyone. I want to come to you today and go over the HQ challenge number 10, which are the two questions dealing with anatomic alterations. So before we get into the questions, I need to do a little bit of a lead in about obstructive and restrictive disorders. Now, if this is the first time you are seeing this, you're being taught this in school. You may not have it separated in the manner that I separate it. So I strongly urge you to go to my YouTube channel, Respiratory HQ, or my website, respiratoryhq.com, and sign up for the free instructional content because there is a 30 minute video that explains this very thoroughly. What I'm about to do today is go over it very quickly, okay? So, as respiratory therapists, we take care of patients that their disorders fall into two primary categories, obstructive and restrictive. And you remember the obstructive diseases by the acronym CBABE. So here are all the obstructive diseases. And while these are not all of the restrictive diseases, these are the big restrictive diseases that the MBRC likes to test on with the TMC and the CSE. So I tell my students, remember the A's, atelectasis, ARDS, and the P's, which line up in the middle. All right, once you have obstructive and restrictive separated, what you then need to realize is obstructive disorders are all classified as airway disorders that the problem the anatomical alterations are within the airways okay and then restrictive disorders the anatomical alterations lie within the alveoli so when we say in the lung there are really two different places in the lung for now that we're going to talk about the airway and the alveoli and if you can make that distinction right off the bat in respiratory school things become easier all along the way. Patient assessment gets easier. Compliance and resistance becomes easier. Pulmonary function testing becomes easier. So if you haven't watched the video, it's worth 30 minutes of your time, I promise. Anyway, so coming down to here, these are the disorders. Let's talk about anatomic alterations for each of these disorders. So for our obstructive diseases, especially the first four, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, asthma, chronic bronchitis. I'm gonna pull this out this way and we're gonna talk about the anatomic alterations for those three. The anatomic alterations, the change in the anatomy that are gonna be seen will be bronchospasms, inflammation, and when I say inflammation here, I'm meaning specifically of the airway, and then increased secretion production. All right, as far as emphysema, when we talk about emphysema, that main anatomical alteration for emphysema is gonna be distal airway and alveolar weakening. And you just probably said, well, you just said these were airway disorders, but you said the word alveoli. This is true. But because the distal airway means the terminal bronchial, we classify it as an airway disorder. So this is distal airway and alveolar weakening. All right. As far as our restrictive disease processes, when we come over to these, anatomical alterations of these are going to be... Um, atelectasis or uh, if you want to think of this as incomplete expansion of the alveoli um, atelectasis consolidation and increase AC membrane thickness okay so if you know this we can start working that into a entry level question. So these are this question is for the first year students. So which of the following anatomic alterations are responsible for air trapping? Okay, so this is air that gets stuck in the chest because the patient cannot exhale it adequately. And when we exhale, we're talking about that flow of air coming through the airways to exit. So something's wrong with the airways if we're air trapping. So now we have to have the anatomical alterations for the airway. So let's just start with A. Bronchospasm is an anatomical alteration of the airway. And so is airway inflammation. Okay. Little bit of test taking skills. This is your word association. Okay. Airway disorders are going to be 
airway, um, airway inflammation is an airway disorder. Atelectasis, however, is for the alveoli. That's not an anatomical alteration that's responsible for air trapping. It's not A. Bronchospasm, we said that was it. Airway, that's it. Increase AC membrane thickness, nope, that's an alveolar. So it's not B. Here we go again, airway inflammation, yes, that's an anatomical alteration of the airway. Increased AC membrane thickness, nope. And I'm even gonna, not even going to read atelectasis because C is wrong, which means D probably has to be true, but let's check it. Bronchospasm, yep, that is an airway um, anatomic alteration. So when the smooth muscles constrict, the airway gets smaller and it's harder to get air out. Airway inflammation, when the inside of the airway swells, makes the airway smaller, air is hard to get out. And then increase secretion production, which makes the inside of the airway smaller, so it's harder to get air out. So D is responsible for air trapping. All right, so now let's transition this concept into an upper level question, one that is more appropriate for a second year student. All right, which of the following disorder and anatomical alteration pairing. So the disorder has to be matched with the appropriate anatomical airway, number one, that's the first part of this, is responsible for a static compliance of 32. All right, so now this is gonna be an application type question because we're putting two things together. So static compliance tells us about alveolar disorders, the integrity of the alveoli. And a static compliance of 32 is very low, which means there's a pretty significant alveolar disorder. So now when I'm thinking about obstructive and restrictive and anatomical alterations, I'm really just looking for the anatomical, the disorder of the alveoli and making sure it's paired with the correct anatomical alteration. Okay, so asthma is obstructive. It's not A. Chronic bronchitis. That's obstructive, it's an airway disorder. We're looking for an alveolar disorder. Pulmonary edema, yeah, that's a restrictive disorder. It compromises the alveoli. And consolidation, well consolidation means that there's something filling the alveoli and that would be the water from the pulmonary edema. So, so far C's looking good for us. Let's just check the last one. ARDS, that is an alveolar disorder. Okay, but it has to be paired with the correct anatomical alteration. Distal airway and alveolar weakening is an anatomical alteration purely for emphysema. So this is an incorrect pairing. It is the right location, meaning alveolar with ARDS, but it is the wrong anatomical alteration. So the correct answer is C. Okay, so again, if you're kind of looking at this saying, Ooh, I'm not sure if I get that, we haven't really ever talked about that, go to my YouTube channel, watch the three steps for success, or go to my website and sign up for all the free instructional content because this video that works for this is there also. Hope this works for you. See you soon.